Why is Alberta Environment and Parks seeking advice and guidance from angling stakeholders and external scientists? That's today's news. The eastern slopes of the Alberta Rockies is home to the bull trout and other species like West Slope Cutthroat, Athabasca Rainbow Trout, and Grayling. For years, the province has regulated a catch and release policy to help these fish populations recover from a threatened status. After 15 years, the results of these efforts are not encouraging. Fish populations in these rivers and streams have continued to decline. Before taking any action along the eastern slopes, Alberta Environment and Parks reached out for feedback from stakeholders, setting the stage for the formation of the Fisheries Stakeholder Advisory Committee. Yeah, the committee is made up of I think 25 different members from all different uh, NGOs, and uh, I think it's a good idea being that um, Alberta Envi Environment and Parks have started the process of involving the public uh, in some of their decisions. For John Conrad, the formation of the committee was a missing component to a more formal consultation process. I think it's something that's probably been lacking for a long time and I came out of that very first meeting wanting to explore at the next meeting the potentiality for keeping the uh, committee on in, into, the, into the future. It, it makes us so much stronger. Already the advice and guidance provided by the stakeholder committee has contributed to the terms of reference for an independent third-party science review of Alberta's fisheries management approach. Their direction is not to be a prescribed outcome. Their, their direction is look at the, the, the information that's being tabled and we want your professional objective opinion on whether we're on the right track or not. Should it turn out that a new direction for Alberta's fisheries management is warranted, there needs to be at the very least an understanding and acceptance over how the science has been applied. This is a two-way conversation as well. This isn't just you know, the, the uh, conservation groups and angling groups, you know, vetting their grievances with the fisheries managers. It's an opportunity for fisheries managers to hear those, but also for the conservation groups and the angling community to understand the mechanism by which their fish are managed. And improving on that communications component is a high priority for the department. You're, you're going to see a different look and feel as to how we do business uh, with our fishery, with your fishery, and it's uh, because of more of a preponderance towards communicating with you. And that's where uh, these partners come in fantastic because the public services, it's only so large, and it should be so. We don't need government too large, but we need to be communicating more.